Hi, it's Colleen again. Welcome back to my sewing room. So I wanted to show you another really quick and easy project that doesn't take very much time, doesn't cost very much, and only uses a small amount of material. This is a rice pack, or what I like to call a bed buddy, although in my house it has the nickname of hot thing because I use this uh, as a warm pack when I have a migraine. And sometimes the only thing I can get out of my mouth when I'm in the middle of migraine is, can you please go get my hot thing? <laughs> so this is a rice pack that you can heat up in the microwave and uh, you can also store it in the freezer and use it as a cold pack. It's flexible. You can see you can mold it to whatever body part is needing to have a little bit of heat or cold treatment. Um, I tend to pile it on my head right where I have a migraine. Um, it's got five cups of rice in it or a little less depending on how squishy you like your rice pack. And the weight of it, it's probably a pound and a half, two pounds. And that is perfect for me. It's a combination of weight and heat that really helps my migraine. But um, you can customize this to be whatever weight or, th or thickness or squishiness or even whatever size you want. I've made these um, small to put over your eyes. I've made U-shaped ones to put over your shoulders and neck. I've even made small ones to go underneath my wrist so that when I'm using my mouse and my keyboard, I have some added support to kind of help you know, with carpal tunnel syndrome or whatever. So today I'm going to show you how to make this. There's two styles. One does not have a removable cover and this one does. So I'll show you how to make the interior bag and then how to sew an exterior bag with a Velcro closure. Come along with me. My client chose to use this blue cotton. It's tightly woven and has a really nice floral pattern on it. Um, this will be the outer cover that can be removed and washed as needed and then the inside rice pack will be made with this white cotton also tightly woven. Um, it'll be sewn shut and that piece can be pulled out whenever you want to wash the outer cover and then slipped back in. I do want to point out that I buy a lot of my fabrics at thrift stores. Uh, it's really easy to find yardage at thrift stores um, because a lot of times people you know, will have a relative who passes away or goes into a nursing home and they're like, I don't know what to do with all this stuff. They sewed and I don't sew, so I've got gobs of fabric and I don't know what to do with it. A lot of times it'll end up in a thrift store. So this is about four yards of white fabric that I picked up for $2. So I bought it for um, just this kind of project, you know, something that's not going to be seen or maybe it'll be for a mock-up or for a pattern of some kind. And so uh, it's a great way to get fabric inexpensively at four yards for two dollars that's fifty cents a yard can't beat it so for this project you will need two pieces of fabric that are six inches by eighteen inches this allows for a half inch seam allowance on um, all sides if you are using a fold like in this case this fabric is only about thirty six inches wide and it has a fold on this end, then obviously you can deduct the seam allowance from the folded edge. And sometimes that makes it a little bit easier to construct. So I'm gonna start, first of all, by evening out my cut edge here. So I'm gonna line it up with the grid on my cutting table. And I'm gonna trim that so I have a nice, neat starting point. And then my ruler is six inches wide, so I could just cut along this side, but I'm always afraid I'm going to cut myself if I do that. So I'm just going to slide my ruler over six inches and make a second cut. There you go. That's our outer cover. This white fabric is more of a standard 44 inch wide fabric. So I'm going to make it easier on myself to cut it neatly and accurately by first of all folding it in half. So originally it was folded in half off of the bolt and then I'm going to fold it in half again and I'm going to do the same thing I did with the first piece and I'm just going to even up that cut edge so that I know I have some precision when I'm measuring. So I'm going to trim off this little piece here so I have a nice clean line and like before I'm going to move over six inches. One, two, three, four, five, six and line up my ruler with the grids on my cutting table and trim it again. But this is now quite a bit longer than I need it to be. So again, to save myself from having to sew on this one folded edge, I'm going to trim 18 inches from here to the end. So I'm going to measure with my ruler 18 inches from the bottom. Line that up. 
and trim right across the end. And there you have it, the two pieces of your bed buddy. We'll go ahead and start by sewing the inner cover. So you can see here I have folded it and it's pinned along the one side. You don't have to pin it, but I'll show pinned on one side and unpinned on the other. You always start by sewing from the folded edge to the cut edge. So we're going to give ourselves a half an inch seam allowance. We're going to start with a back stitch and then continue for the seam. And then back stitch at the end to secure the thread. Okay. So we'll see there's the one side sewn. It's really tempting to want to just turn and start at the other end of the short edge and go back down. But if you do that, you could end up with an uneven seam here at the end and it could end up bunching up. So always then flip it back around and sew from the fold back down to the cut edge. And I'm going to do it this time without pins because this is a straight seam and sometimes it's just easier to do it without pins. So again with a half inch seam allowance starting and ending with the back stitch. And there you go. We're going to go ahead and do the blue outer cover the same way. bed buddy has five cups of rice in it it's actually fairly heavy so one line of stitching is not really enough to um, keep it from splitting ask me how I know <laughs> so when you've had to clean up five cups of rice from your kitchen floor because the seam split um, you know you never forget that so we're gonna go ahead and do uh, an overlocked edge on the inner and the outer covers just for additional strength. If you don't have a serger that's okay, you can go ahead and just sew a second line of stitching right next to the first and then trim off the edge. Or you could do a zigzag stitch along that seam allowance. That works well too. Um, but I have this wonderful serger I bought on Craigslist several years ago and it was probably 20 years old when I got it. So I have it. I'm going to use it. So it's already filled with um, my, I've got three spools of thread threaded in here. I've already got my tension set. So I'm just going to trim off and finish off those raw edges for extra strength. Okay, so see a nice neat edge and it's got just that extra bit of strength that the overlocking provides. I'm going to do the other side now. So we're just going to go ahead and continually feed it under there. That's called chain stitching. So both pieces will be chained together by this little thread that comes off the overlocker and we'll just snip it when we're done. There you go. And actually, I guess it's called chain piecing, not chain stitching. Um, but it's a little more efficient than stopping in between each piece if you have a lot of pieces to serge like that. I'm going to finish up with the last of our seams. And there we go. We'll trim off those tails. And these pieces are ready to finish. This is such a quick and easy project. That's why I love it. Now that we've made the inner cover, our next step is to fill it with the rice and finish it off. So I'm just using really inexpensive rice from Aldi. This didn't cost me very much at all. It's not anything fancy whatsoever. Um, but the thing that's nice about rice is it doesn't have a very strong scent and it holds its heat really well. 
In addition, there's a little bit of moisture in the rice and that actually makes it kind of steamy when you heat it up. So it's really soothing for if you have a headache or an earache or you want something warm by your feet in the winter time. Um, rice is really soothing for that. I have seen uh, the similar rice packs or similar bed packs made with um, like dried feed corn and they smell terrible. So <laughs> I don't recommend those. Buckwheat is another one that's often used as a filler, but it doesn't have as much weight as rice, and to me it's just not as comforting. So we have sewn and finished the edges of our inner bag. Now I'm turning it right side out. And we don't need to worry about pressing this really because it's just going to be the inner, the inner lining of this bed buddy. So here I have five cups of rice. It's a four cup measure, but trust me, there's five cups in there. I highly recommend using a funnel or else you end up with rice all over the floor and ask me how I know. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and pour this in here and then I'll tell you a little bit more about some options that you have. All right, there we go. And I'm off camera. All right, well, I was off camera for part of that, but you can see I filled it up and I still managed to get some on my table, but it's not too bad. What you don't wanna do is fill this bag completely up with rice. You wanna have some head space so that you can make it malleable and let it form over your head or your foot or whatever it is that you wanna have warm. This also can be put in the freezer and it, it holds its cold for quite a long time too. So it's really comfortable if you have like a, a an injury on a foot or an ankle or a knee and you wanna have an ice pack. This actually makes a really good ice pack too. Um, one of the options that you can do is you can put lavender sprigs in with the rice. I've done that before. Um, you can also put essential oils in there, although if you use essential oils, you'll have to continue to refresh that periodically. So now that I have my bag filled, I'm just turning those raw edges in, and I'm going to pin and then sew that shut. So I'll be back in a minute with that. All right, so now you can see I have folded that in. Just make sure it's even, it doesn't have to be super precise, and I've pinned it. And now comes a little bit of a tricky part. Because of the weight of the rice, it tends to wanna to pull the fabric off like this as you sew. So I like to put something underneath the rice um, just to like take some of the tension off of it. So I'm gonna just use my, my pin magnet here and just set it right underneath it just to make it a little more level. So using the edge of your presser foot as a guide, we're just gonna stitch evenly along the end of that seam. And again, I like to sew just a second line of stitching along here. I mean, you could also do this the same way with a serger to finish off that edge. Um, but I like a folded edge for the inside bag. So I'm going to just sew a second line of stitching right next to the first for security. There you go. Trim the threads and you have the finished rice warmer. Now, I have used these just as it is, but the request from my client was to make one with a removable outside bag so she could wash it. So I'll show you the next step for that. Because this is the outer cover, I'm going to go ahead and iron it to set those stitches and to make sure it's nice and crisp and professional looking. So first I'll iron it inside out. Make sure and steam it really well. And then before we turn it and press it again, we're gonna go ahead and sew in some Velcro. Now I've already cut my Velcro to length. This is um, about 5 8 inch wide, so it's pretty narrow and it's labeled as soft and flexible. So it's not super scratchy and stiff the way a lot of Velcro is. It's soft and flexible. And the reason why we're gonna put Velcro on the opening of this outer cover is because you can microwave it. If I put a zipper or snaps, obviously that wouldn't work in the microwave. So we're gonna go ahead and do a soft Velcro opening and that way you can insert the, um, the rice bag inside the outer cover and take it out when you need to wash this cover. So what I'm going to do, let's see if I can get this on camera, is I'm going to fold over this raw edge just 
just a little bit, just maybe a quarter of an inch or a third of an inch, just enough to get that raw edge caught into the stitching that we're going to do in a second. So you can see there I have my raw edge folded over and then I'm going to position the Velcro on each side and I'm going to stitch around it at the top and the bottom and go around the entire opening and that will encase my raw edge and attach the Velcro. So I have the fuzzy side here and the scratchy side here. So we'll just demonstrate that um, and then when you flip it you'll be able to close it. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine now and stitch around these two things. My sewing machine has a piece that can remove to make this a uh, free arm and that makes it easier to sew around sleeves or tubes like this. Um, it's too small to fit around my sewing machine so I'm going to remove this piece and now this whole section is free and I can slide this around it. There we go. It takes a little fiddling but it works. So if you can slide it around there, uh, that'll help you have greater control. So you can see here, I have my raw edge folded and I'm ready to begin sewing. I'm going to line up the fuzzy side of my Velcro and I'm gonna stitch all the way across the top. Now when I get to the end of the Velcro, I'm going to go ahead and do a reverse stitch to anchor it and then I'm going to keep going to the other side and I'll attach the other half of the Velcro. Now let's place that other piece of Velcro down. I'm going to lift my presser foot after lowering my needle and position that right in there and then I'll just continue sewing around the edge. Okay, now we're going to need to sew down the other side. So I'm going to lift my presser foot, I'm going to slide the cover over until I can get right on the edge of that Velcro and I'm going to then stitch around one more time to capture the other edge. Now we back stitch. And keep going. That completes the Velcro opening of our bag. So you can see there's one side, there's the other, and all of our raw edges are encased. So now I'm going to turn this right side out and we'll take this over to the ironing board and press it, but I want to show you um, how that closure works. <laughs> it's uh, tangled up. Let me get my hand in there. Okay, there we go. Pop out those corners. And then I can turn this outward and you'll see I can close that right up. And that will stay closed and it's nice and neat on the outside. Nothing scratchy, it's just nice and neat and encased. So here we are again at the ironing board and in order to press these seams nice and neat, I'm going to kind of roll it over. I don't know if you can see this. But I'm going to roll that over and wiggle it just a little bit to make sure that that seam is turned out nice and neat. And then we're going to give that a quick press down the side. We'll just continue to roll and press until we get to the end. And then we'll repeat that process on the other side. I'm going to roll and press. My, uh, <laughs> my iron is making kind of awful noises over here. Sounds like a stomach that hasn't been fed. All right, roll and press. We're gonna just roll, wiggle that, and press it into place. You know, they say ironing is one of those things that can make a big difference in how your projects look. 
you know, change it from being homemade looking to more professional looking. And I definitely have found that to be true over the years. So when I take time to iron as I go, everything looks a lot better. Looks like I got a little drip from my iron, but that'll dry just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and clip these threads and we're done with the sewing and pressing. So now we have two finished pieces. We have the internal rice bag and a removable cover. You can stop after this step. I've done that. And actually the rice bag that I use is, is this kind. It doesn't have a removable cover and it works just fine. If you want to go the extra step and have a cover that you can change out and wash, um, then that's what this next step is. So this project by itself takes five minutes maybe. You can make it with a fat quarter um, or some scrap fabric and just a little bit of rice and you have a wonderful tool to keep you warm on a cold night or to help if you have aches and pains. Um, if you want to make the cover, it's an additional maybe 10 minutes. So you're talking a really quick and easy and expensive product project and it's great for gifts. So I'm going to go ahead and open my bag and insert the rice bag in there. Now remember we left a little bit of headspace in that rice bag. So it's flexible and malleable and it is a little bit of a wiggle to get this in there, but we'll just work it in there. You know, if you're only washing it every so often, this uh, little bit of effort is not too bad. You wouldn't want to do this every single time probably, but just every so often to remove this and wash it and put it back on is fine. So now we're going to just smoosh that around, zhuzh it as one of my coworkers used to say. So we're just going to get that down to the end. It's kind of like getting a pillow in the pillowcase. I'm just going to get that in there. And now you have a nice cozy rice bag that you can heat up in the microwave, you can store it in the freezer, and you can use it to make yourself feel better. There you have it. A really quick and easy project that's perfect for gifts. You can make them in sell them at craft fairs, which I've done. I've probably made and sold over a hundred of them. Um, or you can just make it for yourself and your family to enjoy when you need a little extra TLC. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and I'll see you in next video.